I got your wig, I got your wig, ho. Ha ha. You're mad, Miss Wikiana. Miss Wig, Miss Wig, Miss Wikiana. Miss Wig. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Before we get into this video, everything I say is not motherfucking fact in this bitch, so don't take it as such. Girls can't take my motherfucking mouth, bitch. My mouth is real and it's raw and it's watchy, bitch. I'm gonna give the girls exactly what the fuck they asked for. The girls is going to know my rap. Trust me. Well, hello in this bitch. I am Karen Hooker's wig or the wiggy Anna, and welcome to my channel. If you don't know who I am, I just told you who I am, and I go over a multitude of reality shows, and sometimes I go over some hot topics. And the first hot topic, honoring my mother, I want to get into before we get into these reality shows is Miss Wendy Williams, my mother, the doll, the icon, okay? I watched part one of her documentary, and I was sitting there hard and shaking with anger. I mean, just sitting there mad, okay, in this bitch, because y'all are doing her really sour, trying to kill her and take her money. When I say y'all... I'm talking about her manager, Will. I shouldn't say this to be true because I don't know it to be true, so allegedly. But I'm just saying, from what I saw in the documentary, bitch, you're giving me sketchy Anna in this. And also that other white lady. I'm not trying to do race in this hoe, so it's nothing to do with race. I just don't know her name, so I'm just going to call her white lady. And that don't mean you can call me black bitch because y'all don't know my name. Maybe I shouldn't call her no white lady. Okay, I'm just calling her <laughs> Becky Anna. Becky Anna, this guardian over my mother, I don't know who she is, and apparently the family don't even know who she is, but she's the guardian of Wendy, and the family cannot see Miss Wendy. What the fuck is going on? Well, the Wendy Williams show was canceled two years ago. The four-part docuseries, Where is Wendy Williams, delves into her cognitive issues and her alcohol abuse. CNN Entertainment correspondent Elizabeth Wagmeister has the story. A daytime TV icon with unfiltered commentary and off-the-cuff celebrity gossip. Wendy Williams' talk show redefined daytime television and ran for 13 seasons with an audience who had a front row seat to her extreme candor and at times, personal demons. And you know I've had a struggle with cocaine. In 2019, she tearfully revealed that she was living in a sober house. Two years prior, she fainted live on air. Williams, while documented health concerns, often resulted in hiatus after hiatus. In her absence, the series ultimately ended in early 2022. The years after, however, have been somewhat mysterious for her fans and even family. At the peak of her career, she was gone. A new docu-series on Lifetime explores the Williams saga. It's executive produced by Williams herself. She pitched it as a behind-the-scenes look at her life with hopes of launching a podcast. But producers soon realized that they were capturing something very different from a comeback. You are bigger than this. You are better than this. Her niece, Alex Finney, participates in the documentary. Producers say they finished shooting Wendy's portion last year. Are we ready? Where is your aunt today? Well, you know, she is away at some sort of facility and she is healing. Um, you know, Elizabeth, part of what has been so complicated and challenging about this for myself, and I'll, I'll speak for my family in this instance, and that is we don't have an exact location in terms of where she is. We have no way to actually call her personally. A care team for Williams says the former host has been diagnosed with aphasia and dementia which can impact communication, personality, and the ability to understand language. Her niece also says the former host has been suffering from alcohol abuse. Did you drink this whole thing today? Shortly after her talk show was canceled, a New York court appointed a legal guardian to oversee her finances and health. The case has been sealed along with the identity of the guardian. Can you explain the process of this guardianship and how involved the family is, if at all? To put it really simply, the family has been shut out. My aunt was placed under this guardianship in April of 2022. She went into court, it was closed, so we don't know the details. And when she came out, she was under this court-appointed guardian. And here we are now in February of 2024, and that information is still really limited. 
CNN has been unable to speak directly to Williams about the project or verify her family's account of their conversations, but we reached out to the care team and they declined comment. As for Finney, she says she speaks to Williams over the phone and she's hopeful for her aunt's progress, but still has concerns. Some stuff that people are going to see in this documentary is just not adding up. I think a lot of people are going to have questions in terms of where is the guardian? Where is the oversight? Now, this saga continues. Just this morning, we have learned from a source that Wendy Williams' legal guardian filed a lawsuit against Lifetime's parent company, A&E. Now, that lawsuit is under seal, so we are not clear on what the contents are. But just moments ago, Boris, I received a statement in from a Lifetime spokesperson that says, quote, Lifetime appeared in court today in the documentary, Where is Wendy Williams, will air this weekend as planned. So it seems that Lifetime has prevailed against whatever the guardianship was trying to fight against with the network. Now, Boris, I actually was a frequent guest on the Wendy Williams show. I worked with her for years on her mm. show. And in the final season, when Wendy was not coming to work because of health issues, which now we know the diagnosis, I was a fill-in host. And the reason why they needed so many hosts to come in was because Wendy was not there. She was having health issues. And again, now we know what those health issues are. But Wendy, as we all know, a true force, no one like her. And of course, we are wishing her the best with her recovery. Yeah, absolutely. She is a, a legend and we're sad to hear this news. But uh, as you said, we do wish her the best. Elizabeth Wagmeister, thank you so much for the update. Okay, so like I said, what is going on and how did this Beckyana lady, I don't mean to call you Beckyana, I just don't know your name. Actually, bitch, I don't give a fuck about you. What are you doing to my mother? You're throwing her into rehabs, which I, I mean, yes, but the family should be involved in these facilities. You just taking her somewhere and she doesn't know what's going on. You and this manager, like I said, will. We're going to get into you two in a minute in this bitch after I show some clips of Wendy's behavior, and I'm not showing them to make fun of her due to she was diagnosed with dementia and whatever you just saw in that last clip. I'm not a doctor, so the shit ain't gonna fall out of my mouth correct, okay? But she is going through it, so I'm gonna give her a pass as, again, I have never gone through what she is going through, and it seems to be a lot, and she has people manipulating her, taking her money, being around her, just being a yes man, and letting her drink up. Dumbass. Go downstairs, please, and okay. pour something and make you fat. Okay. Okay, before y'all start eating my mother up, as I saw on Twitter already, you guys talking about, I don't care if she has dementia. She shouldn't be talking to people like that. Bitch, have you had dementia? Do you know what it does to your mind? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, have you had it? So I don't know why you're judging somebody if you've never had it, okay? But anyways, I just wanted to say, like, I don't give a fuck how she was talking to that bitch because I feel like she's a yes woman and in on the scam with Will, that Beckyana Ho, and Wells Fargo, okay? Because when Wendy was in the car talking about let's order drinks and y'all saying that she has a drinking issue, you're sitting there telling her your favorite drink so she can get it. So y'all can drink together. And while, yes, Will is sitting there and acting like, oh, I hate when Wendy drinks and so on, the first thing you said when you sat down on camera was, ooh, bitch, I need a shot. So it's clear to me the people around her are not sober. Why did it take so long? Well, he couldn't find the right one, and this is the only one he had. I hope this is the right one you need. First of all, you didn't go past the Wendy Williams show or the Chevy Shepard show. We're going to go past her now. Yeah. All right. That's where we need to go past. Uh, is that the correct one? is this? <laughs> Miss Wendy said, hold on, bitch. This is not what the fuck I smoke, okay? But on a real note, like I said, I don't feel bad for the lady that she is bossing around. As, again, I feel like she is in on this scheme. She's just taking all the orders that she can. She doesn't give a fuck if she's called fat, neat, lipo, and so on and so because they are all pushing Miss Wendy to die so they can get her coins. Maybe I'm just being a conspiracy theorist in this hoe, but it just seems to me Something really sketchy is going on between Will, this lady that y'all saw that's getting bossed around in this hoe, and Wells Fargo. Get right back in. Go past the Wendy Williams show. Go past the Sherry Shepard show. It's on 26th Street. Give, me the Give it back, please. Give it back. And don't take more than two seconds. You're supposed to go past... The Wendy Williams show. Okay, but... Make a right. This is where we get the blues from every time. No, no, excuse me. You're just a driver. Ooh, Wendy, that dementia got you 
eating the girls. But I'm going to give you a pass, like I said, as, again, I don't know what dementia does to the mind. Or the mouth, clearly, okay? So, like I said, you have been eating your driver up. But I do like how he was sticking up for himself um, when you were talking to him sour a little bit. But the only thing I didn't like was when he said he needed more money due to you talking to him sour. Like, does she have anybody in her life that just wants to help her without getting paid? I mean, rightfully so, I understand he wants to get paid due to how we see Wendy talking to him. But, like, again, to my question, where are her friends at? Oh, wait, they can't be around her because we have this guardian blocking people. We have the guardian blocking family. What the fuck? Only one coat, please. You only one? Okay. Yes, just one. Oh, oh God. What are you doing? Uh, this just make sure that the, the coat no. here. No, no, take this off. Okay. You said the same thing. Take that off. Okay. Are you stupid? That poor nail tech looked like she wanted to slap the shit out of Wendy. And I'm happy she didn't as Miss Wendy again has dementia so she cannot control her mouth or her mind. Okay, maybe she can. I don't know that to be true as, again, I've never had dementia, so I don't know what it does. I just wish people had more grace like the nail tech, how she didn't slap Wendy when she was going the fuck off and calling her stupid and so on. Maybe she didn't call her stupid that time. She called somebody else stupid. But look, I'm happy she had grace and didn't go the fuck off and she was just sympathizing with whatever Wendy was going through. Now, I know some of you guys are going to say, well, isn't that what the publicist is doing now? The publicist is in on the scam, like I've been saying in this bitch. This nail tech lady is a one-time thing in this hoe, okay? So she's not used to what's going on. But it's clear to me she has sense that something is going on with Miss Wendy in this bitch. Anyways, this documentary has been so sad to watch as this has not been the mother we have come to love in this bitch, okay? And just to see that she doesn't have her family around her because... Like, people are blocking the situation. It's just really weird to me. And like I said, I had my eye on Will as I don't know how the fuck you became somebody she was partying with to her best friend to her manager. Like, I I mean, I guess you can be multi-talented in this bitch, but it just, again, is giving to me sketchy Anna vibes. And all that you're doing with this drinking situation is performative. I'm just sorry. You're having her or wanting her to work when there is something clearly going on with her. This assistant is a dumbass bitch too because she's saying that Wendy doesn't have a drinking problem. Clearly she does. She's always asking for a liquor bottle in this bitch. All of you bitches are in on this scam and I don't like it. Wells Fargo, this old white lady, I'm sorry to call her an old white lady, but I again don't know her name and I really don't give a fuck. And this um, assistant and Will. You bitches are scammers and schemers in this hoe, and I got my eye on you. But we're going to move on to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, where we see some more schemers and scammers with fake breakups or whatever the fuck is going on with Mauricio, Kyle, and she's talking about it with Erica. <sighs> Since that article came out, it's like I'm seeing, you know, oh, obviously it's because Mo cheated. Oh, yeah, it's sausage. It's just chicken sausage that you asked for. I didn't ask for chicken sausage. I'm all right, you? You made it home. I spoke to you last night. Marit's dress is beautiful. Erica's dress is short. <laughs> Who wins? My wife. <laughs> if, we, if we had to take the wives out of the... Who wins? Who wins? Your wife. No. Both wives are out. Oh, so I have to pick anybody but your anybody. wife and my wife? Now Kyle has cheated. People what is the truth with that? Uh, ooh. What do we have here? You better live it up. 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 I know a strapiana when I see one. Ooh. Get the strap. You better live it up. Get the strap. You better live it up. Dike that dike. Dike that dike. You better live it up. I know a strapiana when I see one. What do we have here? Dike that dike. 
dyke that dyke. You better live it up. 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 Get the strap. Hey, it's me interrupting. Hey, 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 hey. I know you're probably wondering why the fuck you're looking at my crotch. Um, I just want to show off my off-white shorts. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, as I said, I'm interrupting as this is a recap. And if you don't want to hear me recap, you can watch these edits earlier on Patreon. They just cost, but you would be supporting my channel, okay? But like I said, or was going to say before I got distracted by my off-white shorts, okay? I wanted to discuss Mauricio and Kyle. Yes, as this is a recap. What the fuck is going on? Because I feel like you two are dancing around the truth. I either feel one of two things, or two of two things on this bitch, that you guys are faking this for clicks and views as, again, you guys are dancing around the truth of what's going on this whole season, and I just feel like this whole, or... Let me clarify myself. Breakups seem to cost or make a lot of money. Let's just look at this whole Sandoval situation. While, yes, it was traumatizing for them, I'm sure it just seemed to make Bravo and the people involved a lot of money. So I'm not sure if this is the situation with Kyle and Mauricio or she is truly a lesbiana and is just afraid to live it on up. I don't know. But either way, I just want the truth as this is a reality show and you're getting paid so much money to live your truth and share your truth. So. Share your truth, girl. This is really just about Mo and me. We're gonna play a game. This is Girls' Night Out Table Topics. What is appropriate for husbands when it comes to communicating with other women on social media? You're not supposed Murder. to be- Murder. I, I think Instagram is literally the worst thing for relationships. I hate it, I think it's terrible. <laughs> I, I've had like a fight with Mo over that, I hate that. I wish I was the kind of person that could just laugh that type of thing off and be like, oh, look at you. But I don't, and not only is it does it feel disrespectful? But it also is like, we're in the public eye and people can see who you follow and comment. You know, you're really disrespecting your spouse in a public forum. And that's like even worse, <laughs> that's even worse. Mo certainly knows that his wife would not tolerate him engaging with younger, attractive women on social media. There might be another couple that the wife would not mind at all. If Marcel's wanted to look at beautiful women on Instagram, we don't have rules per se, but I also don't have trust issues. My husband is the one who, when we first started dating, we would go places and he would be like, oh, um, honey, I slept with her before. So it's like, if you like somebody's picture and I know it's so-and-so that you used to date in 2003, I, why would I be upset about that? I already know that you used to date her. Me and ourselves are different though. We have the horrible conversations. We have the worst conversations. Like we talk about the worst stuff. Like people always want it like rainbows and butterflies and like husband tell me like, like eight and a half. Marcellus calls me eight and a half. And you're like, how does that make you feel? I'm like, great. It's a badge of honor. Like I, and I, it's so funny. Cause I asked so many of my girlfriends that I'm like, what would you do if your husband said you were eight and a half? Oh my God. I, I'd be so upset and I divorce him. I'd be so, I'm like, why? Like, like, I'm not that woman. Like, I don't need, like, don't lie to me. Like, keep it real. That's, that's why I trust my husband because he always is real with me. He's not going to call me a 10 because I'm not a 10. Like, right? So why would I ever think he's lying? Because he tells me all the bad stuff, right? I'm not talking about like, if Mo's liking your photos on Instagram or says something, that's totally different. Yeah. I'm, it's, I'm talking about something that doesn't, that's doesn't make really unnecessary. Sense. Right. And makes me want to grow a horn and a tail and kill people. It happens. <laughs> it happens. That's why I was so glad I was married to someone much older. Didn't even know what social media was. Didn't didn't help much, but you know, there wasn't that. Lucky. Yeah, well, got <laughs> over in a lot of other ways. But also, you don't have to follow every single person and like all their oh photos. But yeah, no, I don't like that at all. It's not about our family. It's not about external family. It's not about another person on his side or my side. So cute, you guys. Oh, would you ever date a woman? You had a question for the ladies. <laughs> Holy shit. It definitely came out of left field. You know what? Two reasons I said that. A, for shock value. B, because I'm at a place in my life where I'm just like, I don't know. I have zero judgment. Do you think I would ever get a tattoo before? 
So I was like, who am I to say? I don't know. That's my girl. I'm not judging anything. Like, who knows? Whatever. That's the best thing I've heard you say all day. At the time, it was very meaningless to me. I just thought it was one of those provocative questions that we ask each other, you know, like for fun. Um, but now I'm like, oh, maybe she's curious other people's perspectives. Was she planting a seed? Was she checking to see what we would think of it? I think she's kind of like fighting inner demons. So I think in asking that question, she's kind of putting out feelers to her friends. Uh, like, you know? are we safe territory? Yeah. Would we be okay with it mm -hmm. if she decided, you know, to yeah. love someone else? Yeah. Well, Describing so yeah. everything clean and starting, you know, from sort of scratch of my own beliefs and, you know, and I'm just a lot more open-minded about a lot of things across the board. Good for you. And my girl was saying to me, like, Mom, I can't believe you got tattoos. I love this new, like, you know, enlightened, you know, open-minded version of you. And whatever you need to do or however, whatever this is, this time in your life that makes you happy, whether it's dating women, not dating women, that's you. And you need to feel good about what you're doing. And whether you stay with Mauricio, don't stay with Mauricio, whatever you guys work out, it's really between the two of you. You deserve to make yourself happy. You've been through enough. Just live your life. It's fine. That's how I feel about it. I've been with a woman. I think it's great to have had that experience, but I don't think it's for me. I really like penises. That's how I feel. You know, that's just where I'm at. I probably would do something on the other side of that. What's that? More penis. <laughs> if I had to answer it today, I'd say maybe. I don't think I could say a hard no. Obviously, if I wasn't with PK. You're I know Dorit's been with a girl. She admitted it. Oh! Dorit says maybe. <laughs> Dorit said maybe and she already said she's been. Or Dorit she kissed a girl. Call, she, she kissed a girl. And call it or something. Where's your Someone. phone? Wait, call you her? do it. No, I'm, I'm not call. doing Wait, it. Wait, where's my phone? I'm already at bad Dana, lab my place phone? with it. Hey Siri, call Dorit Kemsley. Hey Siri. Hi, this is Dorit. Oh, Dorit. God. Have her Dorit. call. Just say Dorit, call it. Call me when you can. No, actually call me fast. <laughs> I love men. Yeah. But I, I mean, if I fell in love with someone, I understand that too, falling in love with someone and they happen to be the same sex. This is a personal question. Yeah, and that's why I'm answering it from my point of view. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I mean, I love men and I want to be with a man, but I could see how people fall in love with someone because of who they are, not necessarily what they're made of. But it's interesting that Kyle would bring that up. Yeah. I was telling him that I overthink these things, and then you clearly just don't don't overthink. You just mm -mm. No, I'm a little covered. Yeah. Can you imagine I show up at my house with a throat tattoo? <laughs> Where am I gonna put it? That's the other thing. That's on you. Did I tell you that Mo asked me how many I had, and he said he didn't know? You look amazing. Oh, thanks. How many tattoos do you have right now? Five. Seriously? This is the first. That one I know. This is the second. Oh, I This is the third. This is the fourth. This is the fifth. <laughs> I mean, you have five. You said five. Right? I have five, yeah. I got into a fight with someone on my Instagram about you. About me? Something about my tattoos and what Kyle's trying to look like this. And I was like, who cares? I mean, like, and I think, too, like, you know, Kyle... I've got her in the, oh, Kyle Richards, oh, yeah. you know, corrupted her into getting a few tattoos. She's got like five tattoos. She's got like five oh, tattoos really? she's, now. She was hanging out with Morgan she's getting added up. Life. She's yes. a yeah, like, nice life. Yeah, nice. but I remember we were getting in a, a car and the, the Uber, I was the first one to get in there and like the driver picking us up was like real skeptical of me, like kind of asking and it, <laughs> You're holding it, it Kyle pissed hostage. her off. She hasn't given a response. What, what are your thoughts on that? We are very good friends. Okay, okay. so it's just a rumor, right? Okay, just a room. Thank you so much. Friends with benefits? <laughs> Best friends matching tattoos? <laughs> we have matching yeah, tattoos too. Matching Wait a tattoos. minute. So, Wait, we need to see those tattoos. She's not the only one I have a matching tattoo with. Oh, okay, we see it. Thank you. Bye. They're gonna assume you're having like a midlife crisis or something with the extra tattoo, but it's great, Morgan. Thanks. Initially, I was drawn to Morgan by her music. Morgan's lyrics really spoke to me because she was just so raw and open and honest and just putting it all out there. You say I'm too young for you. You scared I'm too rough for you. And I admire that in someone, especially someone who has struggled with that myself. 
I appreciate that quality in someone. This is just about Mo and me. As he acknowledged, like, how, how painful this is for you. <laughs> okay, hold on. How painful? What is for who? What's happening? Because at this point, we don't know what is happening. We now know Kyle has filed for divorce. But in this point of the storyline of the show and filming and so on, I don't think they have filed for divorce. And they were talking about that they are not separating. So what is the thing that's hurting you? The articles that are coming out with the alleged cheating situations as this is nothing new. So you should be used to that if he hasn't cheated. Um, or the lesbiana articles that have been coming out with you and your strap girl. I don't know her name. So I'm just calling her strap girl. So I'm a confused again like what's going on and what's hurting you besides your man i think the most important thing is just for you guys to know we haven't told you guys everything because um we try to protect you and then all of a sudden you kind of get blindsided by this public news and then you don't know about it it's probably difficult i just wanted to make sure that we were open and that you guys knew what we were going through and see if there's any questions i wanted to do everything possible to just save it. So you know your mom uh, came and she talked to me um, and she said, I think I need space. Oh, wait a minute in this bitch. We are skipping steps. Kyle needed space. Space. I know what space means in this bitch, but why did she need space? What did you do to make her need and want space? Or was it the strap that made her need some space from you because it was so good? Did you do something to make her need space? Or was it the strap? Either or something was done. Um, she said to me, listen, the rules are that, you know, you go out, you date, you do whatever it is that you want to do. Like, I'm not going to be asking you what you're doing. I don't want you to be asking me what I'm doing. Like, we are separated. I know I keep saying what the fuck is going on, but truly, what the fuck is going on? Because I feel like bitches are playing in my motherfucking face. Okay? Has this been the arrangement all season that you guys have been separated and that you guys can see other people? But now that articles have come out and caught you guys, you guys feel the need to address it because your kids are now probably reading and seeing them? Or I don't know what's really going on. Is this fake or what? I don't know what to believe, honestly. What do y'all believe in the comments? Because this is just too much and confusing for me and I feel bad for the kids that they are dragged into the situation of their parents. I mean, most of them are grown, but like there is one youngie in this bitch. Are they in on this too? Or like, what's happening? And I don't believe like, okay, I shouldn't say I don't believe because I'm not in their marriage, but I'm just saying, I don't know one that would want their husband to be sleeping with other people um, and still being married to them. Like, why didn't she file for divorce? Like, what is this? Are y'all together still to save money? Is it cheaper to stay together and fuck whoever or what? Like, I don't know what's going on. It just seems I'm not getting the full or whole story. <laughs> what's wrong, Porsche? Come here. Heh, <laughs> Mo, what the fuck you mean what's going on, Porsche? Y'all know what the fuck's going on. Y'all got her sour because of this whole shenanigans. Shenanaga? Shenanaganians? With you and your wife? That's what's going on. I've come to realize that, you know, there's a big chance that we're not going to end up together. What is the issue that the two of you can't let go of? There were things that happened that made me lose my trust. Oh, I can't stand no cheating sour ass bitch, okay? There you have it. Mauricio was cheating and sneaking with that deacon. I'm playing. He, was, he wasn't sneaking with no deacon or no man that I know of. But I'm just saying, it seems to me, from what Kyle is alluding to, is that Mauricio cheated. And like I just said, I can't stand no cheating sour ass bitch. If you don't want to be with one, tell them. Don't play them. Gaslight them. Okay? What the fuck? Uh, and that was you. a very vulnerable, real moment about life. And anyone who's been in a long-term marriage, um, there are times where this point comes. What, what was it? What did happen? What caused this to happen? Oh, my gosh. You know, that's a big question. I think there were certain things that were there. And then we had kind of been putting on the back burner for a long time. You know, you're pregnant and you're breastfeeding. And yeah. then it was working and juggling the kids. And you mm -hmm. kind of forget about it. And, it, you know, resurfaces again. Mm -hmm. And I think it just, 
I kind of came to a, a I would say a breaking point mm. honestly you and I'd gone through a lot I lost my best friend and I think that really does change you and makes you look at things differently I think that's important to underscore yeah. you you had a friend who died yeah by suicide by suicide mm. and sometimes that does make you say you, you reevaluate your whole life yeah like wait what am I doing yeah. like life is short this just happened so how did you reassess in that moment well I think I do think that had a big part of it definitely but just what you know you're willing to um, accept and not accept and mm. it's hard because you know like I said in this clip you know it's not like there was one big thing and you know we do love each other very much and have a lot of respect for each other so that makes it even harder to make a yeah. decision like that yeah, yeah. you know it well, would be and y'all have a lot of kids. You have a big family. You have a big family. You have 20 plus years of history, mm -hmm. of shared 28 history. 28 years being married. 28, almost yes, 30. Yeah. So yeah. where, what is happening today? What's the current status? So the current status is um, we live under the same roof. It feels so funny to talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I feel like I'm in a therapist's office. I'm like, oh, sorry, <laughs> that's what we try. We live under the same roof yeah. um, in different rooms. and. Um, it's just sort of like we, you know, we are fortunate enough. We have other homes, and he kind of come and go. And and when we are all there, it's just sort of like you know, if he's there for dinner, great. And it's just so it's friendly. Yeah, it's friendly. Yeah. It is. Um, do you feel gosh. like there's we were a never fight? Or, you know, yeah. I was gonna say we off. had your husband on when I think it was right yes. in the beginning of this, and he was lovely the way he spoke about you. You, the way you he speak mainly about, talked about you the entire time. Yeah, <laughs> even though we knew that you know there was some turmoil there, so there's right. a mutual respect, which is probably the reason that you're both going to be okay. Do you, I, I think so. I mean, it's really hard. It was really hard to um, shoot this season. Because when the cameras went up, we had not even shared this with our daughters. Mm. And, you know, I have a job to, you know, to share my life and to be honest. And I've always have been. And he wasn't really ready to share that. So mm -hmm. that was a very challenging for me to, you know, kind of balance that. And then I thought, you know, this is pretty apparent. So I'm just going to have to just put this out there that things are not great right now. Yeah. Wow. Is there a chance that yeah. you guys will can make it through this? I mean, I, I really don't know what my future holds right now, yeah, to be yeah. honest, which is the weirdest part yeah. of all of this is, you know, I've always had so much stability my entire life. Mm -hmm. And to feel like, oh, I don't really know Feels where weird. my future is, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, next week. <laughs> right. So and, and watching this clip, too, I mean, mm -hmm. the fact that you have to live this publicly, mm -hmm. especially as a mother, yes. um, as a human who yeah. has, you know, a open, beautiful heart, mm -hmm. it must be. Right hard it is very difficult because people um, even people who mean well <laughs> they're like what are you doing you know go home like you you don't, you don't live in our home you, don't know what's going on. you think I wanted to be in this position after being married all this no, you right. know time yeah I mean I don't I mean my dream was to you know be married forever and yeah. grow old with this person I did not want to be in this position trust me mm -hmm. so um, you know, it is hard living it out in the public eye. Well, I do think people weighing in and just blurting out their own opinions to you, does it? Does that get to you when people do things like that? Well, it's it's also, it's their fantasy. You know, yeah. people say to me, you know, you were my inspiration. And yeah. um, I get that I'm ruining their fantasy. <laughs> I mean, I even had close friends, you know, who are really, yeah. you know, upset about it at first and, yeah. you know, that I hadn't shared certain things with. So... Um, I, I understand that, and I, there's also so many sweet messages and people yeah, saying, of course. I admire your strength, yes. and you know, you're inspiring to me. I'm like, this is not a message everyone go out and leave their husbands. Okay? <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, I do get a lot of that and uh, so much support. Mm -hmm. So season 13, Wow. does it feel like that you want to keep coming back? It feels like season 300 right now. <laughs> um, do I want to keep going? I mean, this is a decision I make, you know, every really? year after. I, this year more than ever, of course, I thought, mm, do I really, really want to do this? Especially, I don't know where my life's going to be. Yeah. Kyle Richards and Mauricio Mansky have separated after 27 years of marriage. Oh my God. It's in people? Kyle never ever gave an indication that they were separating. That's why you mad? That's why you, why you mad, mad? Hold on. Okay, because I have an announcement. Dory MPK, I feel like you guys are more upset that you guys didn't know this information because you guys want Mauricio. That's y'all's man. Okay, I feel like y'all want to share him or something of the sort. Or you guys would battle to the... What's, they, what's the term? Battle to the hell or something of the sort. Is that it? 
I don't know if it's it, but I feel like you guys would battle to the term that I'm thinking of for Mauricio. Yes. Ooh, battle to the death. That's what I'm thinking of. Yes. You bitches will battle to the death for Mauricio. So that's why you guys are upset you didn't know this information beforehand. I'm playing. That's not really it. But um, I do feel like they are upset as they are Kyle's friend and they want to know what the fuck is going on. As you've been telling us, nothing is going on. And then all of a sudden, boom. Who planted this story? You want conjecture? Morgan told People Magazine that. I know a strap piano when I so see one. Let me tell you something right separate. now, Rob Minkoff. You're in crazy director mode. Who are you most excited to see? Old friends I haven't seen in a while, you know, meeting new friends, so many people. Yeah. yeah. And you? The housewives. The housewives. Of Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always thought Kim Kardashian is here. Of course, we love Kim and know Kim. Oh, and I've never met Kim in a life. Always have loved. I thought you're so beautiful. Thank you. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. I know. It's so it's so You're a housewives fan. I am. Are you kidding? I don't miss is. a show. Yeah. I'm addicted. You should be on. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll get, I will I'll scissor get you. I will scissor you. Oh I'm, yes. What is that? Oh my god. You, I didn't need know what this season. You need a haircut. By the way, that was that was, that was um from those cards they asked us, yeah, you know, but, but I like uh, you I have such good energy. You have so much fun. And then when you guys sleep in rooms, I'm like I will up in her room because we'd just be having fun. We'll give her a little trim. <laughs> we we'll, we do have fun. Or you can see in Kathy's room. We'll she'll keep you up all night chewing chips. <laughs> well, she'll love that. I love that. Right? I like your fan and your whole setup. Exactly. You have to get a beauty rest. Right? See, this is fun. I saw when she came. I saw there's Carmen Electra. This season on the show, yeah. we saw everything happen with you and Mauricio. How are you doing? And how's he doing? Uh, you know, we're doing okay. We're actually pretty good considering we're very good. Friends, you know, we always were even, you know, as a married couple. So we live in the same house and we're a family. So it's really, we're, we're doing good, considering. It's a, it's, a, it's a relatable story. Many people go through that in America. I guess. I never thought we'd be in I a situation. Thought. No. And, you know, to be getting along like this and having dinner and just like, but not together, but not together, you know. I don't know. Are you nervous about today? You know, there's stuff with Kyle and I. You obviously saw in the press. The things where she said, you know, I exaggerated our friendship. We've only gone on one trip together as a couple that I can recall. Um, Mo and PK Dre and me. It's not like, you know, my friends, like, you know, we'll go to the gym, we work out together, we hike together. She doesn't do that kind of stuff. So um, it was just, it was just. Sends me a text yesterday, basically trying to silence me. Okay, hold on. So if you're wondering what's going on now, we are at the reunion. When I say we, the girls of the Beverly Hills, okay? So apparently Miss Kyle Strapiana sent a threatening text to Dorit. Get her, get her, get her. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm good. It's it's uh, probably the happiest I've been in this situation in two years. Yes. Yeah. Do you share the same feeling tonight, Kyle? I wish I felt like Erica right now. Yeah. Um, Erica mentioned to me on Watch What Happens Live that she was eviscerated a couple of years ago. She felt here, and she thinks you're next up for that. Andy, Andy, Andy. <laughs> you really are a cokehead, messy bottom with a corroded hole. I see you trying to start mess between Miss Erica and Kyle, and it didn't work, honey, as the shade really was towards you. I know she said she wanted to see Kyle get eviscerated, but that was more so like she wants you to hold everybody accountable, not have favorites with people, okay? So if you're going to eat Miss Erica up about something she didn't share or did say or something of the sort, have that same energy with everybody, which you don't. So I feel, again, the shade was towards you, and it went right over your head as you were trying to start mess between Kyle and Erica. And it didn't work. Erica has been an amazing friend to me. She's someone that I can trust and someone that I value as a friend. And I honestly think that she was trying to say that you eviscerated her last year. And it was more about that than about me. And I, I, I really did not take that personally. Yes, 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 ladies. Okay. That is how you clear a messy bottom with a corroded hole in a coke problem. Okay. Kyle and Erica said there ain't no issue here. 
don't start none, won't be none. Okay, they didn't say all that. But basically, like you just heard, they're good, okay? So the next show we're going to get into is The Real Housewives of Potomac. And we see Miss Mia and we see Miss Ashley talk about they sugar daddy. But anyways, what's going on with you? Okay, hold on. My dumb ass forgot something. Before we move on to the Potomac ladies, what happened between Dorit and Kyle? Like, why are y'all really falling out in this bitch? Is it because what I said earlier? Dorit, you really want... And I'm playing. I know Kyle texted Dorit, so... Does she not want Dorit to say something that may make Kyle's story look sour because she wasn't telling the truth of all that's been going on? Is that it? I don't know. Okay, now let's get back into the Real Housewives of Potomac. I was just confused on what... And I still am confused on what's going on between Kyle and Dorit all of a sudden. But now, again, let's get into this new show, okay? I feel like we just haven't had a chance to, like, talk. Like, what's going on with the divorce? How are you feeling? Are you okay? Um, well, okay. first off, let me ask you, how are you and the kids doing? How yeah. are y'all doing? Uh, well, I'm great. My kids are pretty young. My son is two. My other son is one. Mm -hmm. So they don't really have an awareness. And Michael and I are still living together. We're still under the same roof, so no difference for them. And the latest information for those who, who don't know, you announced uh, fairly recently that... That we are separated after almost eight years of marriage, Michael and I are separating. How, uh, the question is, this is what comes up a, a lot of times when you're doing reality TV. Yeah. Is, a lot, is it any of this um, going to be on, on the show? Well, yes, and it does limit a lot of what I can right. disclose here. Mm -hmm. um, so it, they're documenting and mm -hmm. all of that is unfolding. Right. Mm -hmm. Ashley, you're very active on social media, and I'm sure you saw some of the reaction and comments on your page, various blogs. What do you make of the, the public reaction since you put it out? I know ultimately it doesn't matter, Yeah. but but how are you taking it all in? Um, honestly, I'm not really taking it in, Marissa, to yeah. be, because... Even though I'm a public figure and I put so much of myself out there for public consumption, ultimately, especially now that I have kids, what is most important is their well-being and my well-being. So uh, I appreciate the support that I'm getting, and that's really nice, and that's really all I can ask for. Let me ask if you can share, um, obviously because you're on reality TV, a lot has been shared of your marriage, you and Michael sharing it yourselves. Uh, there were suspicions and, and reasons why people thought perhaps this was coming or perhaps inevitable. Was that really the case? Was it, did you feel like it was inevitable or did you all kind of decide recently this is, this is what we have to do? It is more of a recent thing. My marriage has been through quite a lot. Uh, I've been open about that on the show. We've had issues with infidelity that we've overcome. So it's nothing of that nature. It will definitely be, I think, I think it's a little bit of a cause for pause for people. And that's why they'll want to see the show because I do give more of an insight as to how and why we got to this place. And it's not for the reasons that a lot of people mm. think. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We wish you well, and, and we appreciate you being so open, uh, not just here, but, but also on the show. So Thank you. I know you take it better than most right. as far as putting your life out there, but, but at the end of the day, divorce is, is, is never easy. It's so. not, but, you know, we, we are still co-parenting, mm -hmm. and that, I think, is what really keeps us sane is that we mm -hmm. have to be civil. We can't really argue or fight or anything like that in front of the children. So that keeps everyone's temperament in check. You haven't mentioned, but of course there's child support. There's possibly alimony. So one question I have for you is, is there a prenup? So there's no set amount that he's going to be giving you? And initially a prenup said that I wouldn't get alimony, that I would just get a lump sum. But my prenup is now not valid anymore. If we're married for five years. And we'll be married for eight years in May. So we're like legally separated. On the state of Virginia? So, yeah, you can be separated, still living in together, as long as you've formed the intent for the yes. marriage. Yes, and we yeah, don't to be. sleep in the same room. Well, the biggest thing is we've talked about to start the process outside of using attorneys. So he has said that he would send me, like, a proposal so that we could keep it fair. We've talked about <laughs> sitting down and having a proposal. Who's writing it? Well, the Michael. <clears throat> Is he gonna be on the house? Is his name gonna be on your house? Um, when I was younger, my mom and I were evicted twice from our house, so I've sat on the side of the street with my mm. belongings multiple times. It is fear. When Giselle said it's operating in fear, like, yes, I am scared. Girl, no, I'm not falling for this shit. You really don't want to leave this old ass man because if you did, you would have been a better sugar baby because how come you don't have no funds? 
Like, why are you worried about being on the streets? What's going on? Where's your money? Don't you get paid from this show? Y'all get paid millions, thousands, I'm sure. What the fuck? Don't you have endorsement deals? What's going on? Where's your money? What's? Why are you so scared? I, that was a nice story that you shared about you and your mother. Yes, I feel so bad. Oh, boo hoo 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 hoo. But no excuse for you not to be leaving this sour ass man. I don't understand. Do you not get paid again from this show? I, I don't. I'm sorry. I really don't have any sympathy for Ashley. I know I should have sympathy for one going through a divorce, but like. Why are you not divorced? Yes, I mean, the reality is I still live with him. And we've been together for over 10 years. So the reality is, like, I'm going to sometimes want to be with him. And he's a really great dad. So are you guys getting a divorce? At this rate, yeah. Yeah. We're eight months in. Four more months to go. Like I said, Ashley, I don't think you really want to leave Papa. Because if you really want to leave Papa, you would have been left Papa, this bitch. It ain't about no funds. Because, again... I'm pretty sure you have enough funds from this show to leave and be fine, okay? So, it's not about that. You just want to hop on that old crank. Crank, crank, crank. <laughs> I'm playing and also disgusted. So, we're now going to move on to Miss Ineka and Wendy talking about their situation. They're finally sitting down, okay? I knew that you guys had something against me or disliked me. She submitted my name to a shrine. and threatening to send my in-laws name to a shrine. It was never about NECA. Nice try, nice try. It was not a fight between friends. Ivy told my in-law that Wendy was upset that I had allegedly used her name, and I'm telling people that she and I are friends, okay. to be amongst a social circle. It seemed like her, her sister and her mom were trying to prevent me from like interacting with these women. Maybe instead of them to see you as a fellow Nigerian, they're seeing you as a Nigerian that maybe want to take somebody's spot. So what did I do to you? Where did all the hatred come from? The hatred That's came from her sister happen. communicating that I'm a clout chaser, I'm, um, I'm jealous of you, everything under the sun. So you went and told her sister and her mama that I was on the show and they were mad. Your family was acting you on see, your you behalf. You keep on saying my family. But your mom submitted my name to a shrine. And that's where she puts the names of people. What? She's and doing that... voodoo on you? This woman put a hex on this. And then she says <laughs> that we should ask about her in the DMV. Ask about who? Wendy's <laughs> mom and her shrine and her prayers. And check on those people who I've prayed against and see how they're doing. They're not doing well. Is this normal? Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> Why are you drinking your drink? <laughs> I had to take a sip because this is hilarious. And when I talked to Ivy, she had explained to me that her and Leb had a falling out. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you, okay. Her and Lebby had a falling out. Okay. And you know, I take Lebby as, as my daughter. The way she latches on to us, mm -hmm. some people think she's one of my daughters. Right. It's very hard to find a friend. Mm. Very easy to make an enemy. Okay, so that's why I call them. I don't know this other person. What's her name? Neka. Okay. She said that during the call, mm -hmm. you have mentioned something about a shrine. The only shrine I know is St. Jude's Shrine in downtown Baltimore. You know for a fact the impact of calling somebody or somebody's family member a witch. Your mom submitted my name to a shrine. And NECA, girl, stop with the shrine shit, okay? Shrine, shrine, shrine with no proof. Where's the proof, okay? Y'all are having this lunch, and where are the third parties that are involved? Like, where's the mother who is the said witch? Where's the sister or the friend or the cousin who is the one who was called about this shrine? Like, why are we not having everybody here so I can see who's lying? Can, okay. She did not. I'm willing to even put that aside for us to move forward. So can you not... I apologize. You're not understanding that I've been deeply impacted as well. I'm talking about the fact that you called my mom a witch in my face. I can say tangibly you did that. You're talking about something that is hearsay and third party. That's well, the Le difference. Well, can testify That's to what difference. she was told about me. Girl, well, LaBette should have been here to testify. Where the fuck she at then? Huh? Had enough of you, bitch. I mean, lady. So we're going to move on to the next scene, which is the girls out to dinner, okay? 
You told Mia that she was screwing a rapper and screwing a married man. Right. In years past, mm -hmm. if I had said that, you would be going on a rampage of Giselle's trying to destroy families. Giselle's trying to uh -huh. not respect but the marriages. I didn't do it. Giselle, Giselle, Giselle. Oh, uh, I see. I'm gonna have to read your dumb ass. Okay, Karen didn't say nothing about Mia that wasn't already said or that wasn't true. Okay, doesn't Mia fuck on married men? Let's move on. And secondly, Miss Giselle, you do talk about people's marriages and do try to break them up. Do I need to roll the clip on your ass? Giselle constantly attacks our husbands. So when you attack our husband, we return serve by saying, how can you attack us when we have no one in your life to even attack? Why would you bring a lie on this platform if you know it's a lie? Because you're breathing you life into it by why bringing it up bring on the show. It? So that's why she is Giselle Lax Bryant, because <laughs> you can't attack somebody if you lack that thing that you're attacking in that other person. Her you point was specifically yeah. that you're putting something out there about her husband that's not true. Don't attack my husband. Yeah. Because that's something I do not play with. Why are you looking at me? I'm looking at you because it was your ass having the conversation with Ashley. Did you tell her what I said? So I'm putting your ass on notice. Mm. Because what you're not going to do, let's be very clear, is you're not going to play with my husband's name. Don't with my family. If anyone was truly concerned, you mm. can call me, and no one has. So when you sit here on your soapbox and try to say, I'm not getting through to you, no, you're not going to get through to me, because if you really wanted to, you could have a one-on-one -on -one and call me. So let's not play the theatrics, because I'm not here for that shit today. I, I, think it's, I think it's always funny to hear her say that people are insecure when she's really the most insecure person in our group. She deflects all the time. She never wants to talk about her issues. And she does things to purposely hurt people. So I'm okay with where we are. But when we think of insecurity, it's Giselle's face literally in the dictionary. So you were on the hater list. And oh, what? hating on this? Robin. Um, so honestly, at this point, we are oil and water, and I am fine with that. <sighs> All right. Today? And I don't care about like filtering myself or mm -hmm. saying things that that I think would be um, well received by the audience. Mm -hmm. For example, not inviting Wendy's kids to that to the play date. <laughs> this is not okay. Why is that not okay? It's just the kids. I said, Candace, can you take on an auntie role, reach out to Wendy, say, Wendy, I got your kids, I'll bring them, and Wendy declines. He should have been bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that that's not a good look, but guess what? I'm a human being, and if I'm literally arguing with someone, and you saw there's a lot of stuff you didn't see. She called me the devil. She told me all of Baltimore was going to come after me. Like, if I'm literally in an argument oh. with someone, um, yeah, I'm not speaking to you. Like, that's human nature, and I want to mm -hmm. know what person in their right mind would turn around to a person and say, oh, would you like to come to family day? You know, but right. I, I have all these people messaging me, oh my God, it's too horrible, the kids are off limits, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but their mom is not. We saw that season five, there was a very healthy mm -hmm. um, conversation with the housewives um, after Monique and Candace got into their altercation. Right. There was a sit down conversation that all of you ladies were a part of. Mm -hmm. um, May I ask you, was that same grace given to you after that moment? Greater face said that you know what, Wendy, you got one, Wendy, you got one more in time. Can you imagine a woman throwing a drink on another woman for not calling a man. No. What type of woman does that? Look at you. Look at the CEO. You oh, look at the CEO. Look at the CEO. Oh, look at the CEO. Is that oh, why you getting up? You gonna throw another? Well, in Maryland, what the hell? Like you embarrassed yourself. You embarrassed your whole business. Y'all are going to see a lot of people eat their words. Y'all remember everybody's position, how, you know, this is not what we do. We're better than this. Watch. Pay close attention. This season is about paying close attention and paying attention to the ways that the goalposts is continuously moved depending on who is on the receiving end. That's what this season's about. That's what this season's about. No, stop antagonizing. You antagonize to the utmost. Y'all better get security here for real, because I, for what? What are you going to do? Shut up!
Why are you just getting worried about my life? I've given you Please the benefit of the doubt. Please put your fingers out of my face. Girl, Please put your fingers out of my face. Please put your fingers out of my face. Please put your fingers out of my face. This is putting my finger in your face. Please don't tell anyone I tried to fight you anymore. It's dangerous you're, you're for you to be held to back. As a I was not held back. You were held back. Maybe you were so drunk. You don't no, remember. She was not. After watching the episodes, do you realize Sharice did need to hold you back from Wendy at the dance studio earlier she, this season? So we've got some context missing here. She did not. So well, she, the she, clip shows that no, 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 she was. No, no, no. She didn't have to hold me back. Okay. Well, she was holding you back. She wasn't holding me back. Candace, I'm all for you defending your husband, but you kept saying Giselle accused him of sexual assault, which she never did. That in itself is dangerous to throw around. She accused him of sexual he... assault when no, she I didn't. said when she said that Ashley's friend was grabbed on the ass by him. So my friend was at the spring party mm -hmm. and she said that you know Chris was being a little bit flirty with her. She was standing at the bar ordering a drink and he came up and he was like like do you think sexual he, assault when no, she I didn't. said in light of Chris had DM'd Ashley and um, there was a situation in which Chris made me feel completely uncomfortable. What I heard was very disturbing. A comfort zone that does not exist for you where Chris is concerned and Correct. Chris thinks that you're more comfortable than you are. As a viewer. Okay. It Why? seemed like you had a really nice relationship with Chris. Yeah. Were you worried about damaging his reputation? Looking back on the dance studio moment, do you wish you approached that whole Chris situation differently, knowing that it would eventually result in the kind of like demise of your friendship? I approached that situation. I thought about that. I, I approached it. Very, I, I chose all my words carefully. I didn't add any like extra drama and hot sauce and tea to it, which I know how to do very well. And I didn't do that because we were friends. Now we're no longer friends, so I can real get to the get to the T and the nitty gritty of it all. And I, you know, and that's what the reunion is for. That's her uh, mo: again, damage every again. man's mm. reputation if, because she is mad okay. that her sh stinks. Giselle has a, a history, and there is a reputation there of her being fast um, in her past and her being um, loose in her past. This, this is these are facts. I'm not making this up. Um, so, you know, I see her flirting with Chris and it's like, oh, po po thing. Just po thing. That's cute. It never You said po thing or poke thing? Po. Oh. P-O apostrophe. <laughs> po. Po thing. That's, it's, it's just, you, you can't, you can't ask for, for more from, from someone who can only give you less than half. Like, I, I can't, it never bothered me. So, he may be attracted. She's a beautiful woman. I'm attracted to Giselle. She's a beautiful woman. Like, I'm she, attracted she to is Giselle. A beautiful woman. Giselle's gorgeous. Okay. Yes, I agree. L listen, she's beautiful, but a shell is a shell, okay? And shells often have funky insides, and that's one. <laughs> Let me go back to the beginning. Giselle, the, the criticism was that you waited until cameras were up mm -hmm. and this could have been dealt with before. You could have called me and you did it because no. you wanted to wait for no. an opportunity to do it on a platform that true. would cause the most hurt to someone who has ever been anything true. but kind to you. And that is what this that's not that is true. what I just yeah. was like, wait a minute, I feel that this is something Candace should know. I think we would all be able, including the viewers, to give Giselle the benefit of a doubt to say that that's true. However, there has now become a clear pattern mm. of this happening time and time again with people's husbands, oh my God. where you have a problem, but the timing always coincidentally happens when the camera starts rolling. Well, I think you saw some of my reaction in the trailer. I, what I will say is this. When you are dealing with people who are lacking in personal lives, personal story, they have to resort to acrobatics, creative ways to, you know, construction paper, Elmer's glue to just make up um, school projects. Okay, Miss Giselle, did that rejog your memory? I'm going to be nice because I don't know if you have dementia. And I know we just talked about Wendy Williams. I'm not sure if you actually really do have memory issues because you can't seem to take accountability. And I'm not sure if it's because you don't remember anything, dementia, just a dumbass bitch, 
or what? Okay, so we're going to move on to, I guess, the girls crowning in Neko with something that she doesn't deserve, or I guess she does deserve, but who really gives a fuck? Why is she still on this? Okay. I said I was going to give her a chance. I know it's eating her the fuck up. I'll try to see what she gives next season. But right now, again, still, I'm not connecting with Miss Inneka. There is now a um, new <laughs> grand dame. Why they hate this? Playing draft. Yeah, well, speaking of NECA, apparently she is there to kind of uh, challenge the Grand Dame <laughs> title. What do you right. think of that? Well, you know, the wise woman once said, people come for me all the time. They just <laughs> yeah. don't find me. <laughs> they just don't. Better luck. Bye, girl. Yeah, yeah. Bye, girl. <laughs> you know, I like NECA, though. She's yeah. a, she is fun. She is fun. She just needs her own title. Okay, yeah, we can get her. We're good. Oh, like yeah. Nekadom. So Nekadom. Nekadom. I'm suggesting Nekadom. Okay, well, let's put that out there. Nekadom. <laughs> no, there she's now. a good person, though. She's fun. Okay, Miss Neka actually does live in Potomac, so yes to you. But what's so funny is they're all shading Karen about not living in Potomac, but none of them do, so I'm confused. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I could have sworn that, again, none of them do, besides Miss Neka, actually. So, I don't know. And this whole title and crowning somebody of the new Grand Dame. Miss Karen already has that title. Nobody's going to call Miss Ineka Grand Dame. You guys are fucking clowns. I have an award for you bitches, though. The Dumb Ho Award. You're crowned with the Dumb Ho Award. There you go. Okay, so the next show we're going to get into is the Real Housewives of Miami. Work! We were, I thought, we were past what had happened with that, ar that article that you had said, which was a blowout. I think, like, by Alexia having that event, and we were... I called her and I was like, let's all start over. I told her the same thing. Yeah, so, I want to be vulnerable and I'm glad you're doing this. But vulnerable. we're not crying. We are obviously on completely different planets. First of all, I personally think that Alexa's event was not the place to do this. Social Probably. media with <laughs> Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who actually is the fakest housewife of them all? Oh. Dr. Nicole wrote it. Michael, Michael. Well... Yeah. Yeah. Do, do yeah, it's gonna with... be Larsa. <laughs> you know, Larsa and I right now are in a place where of confusion. I just don't know where I stand with her, to be honest. And so, um, I hope that we are able to settle it and move along and have fun because I'm I'm that I'm the girl's girl. That's like I just want to have fun and I want to support and fix crowns and I just don't know what's going on right now. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that. Just know, seeing your personality on the show, it just seems like, yeah, you are a girl's girl. You want to get along with everyone. And you mentioned before the Larsa Pippen drama, which kind of came out. She said something about you being the fakest or fakest cry or something like that, right? There was Yeah, so it stemmed from something I said on Friday. I was at um, Page Six's um, live podcast for virtual reality uh, with Evan. <laughs> and uh, so there was something that happened with us. They were playing a game. It was like actually very, very silly. And they said, who's the fakest? EST. So you have to pick someone. I'm like, oh, I don't know, um, Larsa. But I said that with some kind of intent behind it, because I do feel right now I'm confused as to where what she thinks of me as being a, a friend to her, because I saw her as my friend. And you see me this season saying, my God, Larsa, you know, she's that kind of girl that's going to ride with you and say, hey, you're going to kill it, Gertie. You're doing great. And I, I and then you see me sticking up for her with Lisa, like, hey, Lisa, she's hurt. That's why she came with a low blow. And even at all the way to the reunion, you see me still trying to figure out a way to make her and Nicole make up. I'm fighting for Larsa to make good with everyone, and I've got her back like that, the way I have Nicole's back. Okay. I have given you a lot of grace when I felt dismissed, disrespected. Like, see? But for some reason, I'm watching one confessional at a time, one episode at a time, and I'm like, huh, what is Gertie talking about? Why is she even talking? Oh, my God, I'm so confused. What did she say? And I'm like, okay, so... Maybe we're not as friends the way I thought we were and you don't reciprocate friendship the way I do. I'm completely confused as to what's going on. So I mean, my feelings right now about it. And I'm just kind of like one more episode of like, okay, we, we're on different pages as far as friendship. Right. <laughs> That's what I think. And I, I don't right. think I'm lying when you say, see that every single time she talks about me on the on her confessional, it's like lost and confused. Like she's like, I don't know what's going on. Like, who is she? Like, who is she pretty much? I'm like, okay, <laughs> wow. Got it. I'll well, stay away. But so, I'm saying you're saying you're saying that 
I don't even know what you're saying, no offense. I have no idea what you're saying. And that's my point. You're not listening to me. And that's not a friend lot. I want. Maybe if you say a few less words. Do you want me to start crying too? Do you want me to tell you, you I have breast cancer. How and am I supposed I just, to know that? You're not, I mean, like you have breast cancer. Are you okay, baby? I'm, don't, I, I don't like to be touched when I'm like. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm like, sorry. I went in for one mammogram that turned into an MRI that turned into one, two, three biopsies. And I'm going to tell you just, I'm going to just say it. I have cancer. I have breast cancer. How do you know? Are you seriously asking me how I know I have like, breast cancer? Like you went called the the mammogram. And told you? It's called the mammogram, Loisa. Last spring, last March, routine mammogram. Yep. Found out that you had breast cancer. And your life changed instantly. Instantly. How are you, first of all? I'm doing great. I beat breast cancer, thank goodness. I went through chemo, beat chemo, and now I'm doing my radiation, finishing up with that. So it's four week process, I'm on week three, so one more week to go and I'll be back to my old self, God willing. When you got the diagnosis, mm -hmm. what was that first emotion you felt? Shock and denial, like what do you mean? No, nothing feels off, I'm not in pain, what are you talking about? It's a mistake. I, I didn't I, know. What do you I, I need you I to come, to please, you. please, oh my God. I need you, I, I know, I'm know. trying to tell you, to, but, but to you. listen to me, please, you need to listen. I don't know what you're fighting me over. I, I, I I'm love not fighting you. you. I'm not going to cry for you. stop, please. I just want you to listen to me. I need you to give me a safe space to be myself. To not say, well, oh, too many, like, just don't judge, don't say anything to me. I haven't told anybody except for now you, my family. What did Russell say? Disbelief. And, you know, and of course, the first thing he says is, you know, we'll get through this. And he says all the right things, but you doubt yourself, are you? You know, is it going to be okay? And, and thank God, you know, the doctor's team made it known that I will get through this. And that's the reason why I shared it, because I knew I was going to come out on top. So I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to have, you know, known that. But not everybody has that destiny, you know? I wish you would have told me this when you first sat down. That's not something you just say when we first down. That's well, not like, how you I, open like, up a conversation. I don't know. Like, they don't cut and you. Then, when they do like a little biopsy. They have to cut. No, cut. They have to cut me. I hope that you take it in confidence right now, just because I'm, I'm not yeah, sure I'm not, how I'm going to do it. Yeah, I, know, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, I want to make it clear because I have to now tell the rest of the girls. And I don't. You know, like I, there's never a perfect timing with these girls. You know, like that's the thing about it. I mean, you're not gonna get so, one. This is like so. No. Um, but I just want you to know that I. I yeah. really feel bad and I love you and I'm gonna be here for you and I and then there's like you know the drama with Larsa and I is kind of over and then now there's a new drama surrounding and Larsa and it trickles down from so it's kind of like a, a I have trickle down the back to Gertie yeah. and I'm taking it I'm running okay. I'm running the race baby okay. and, and it's fine you know when I have somebody's back and, and what's right is right what's wrong is wrong okay. and because I have true conviction about some things that happened with the two of them in the past it carries on to me because I was friends with her and so we go through those kinks like this right. and then you're gonna see this kind of like I call it a, a waltz. I but think Bernie and I are both very honest yeah, yeah. and genuine, and we don't take sides just because we're friends. Like right. what's right is and right. What's wrong is wrong. People expect you to, and have full blind blindfolding. And yeah. I don't work. Who are that those way. people, Larsa? Well, I, I, like we said, it starts with her, and we put on his past to me, and uh, it is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. What is going on? Uh, we just interviewed Gertie. Yeah. And. Okay, there's I see I see two sides on this. On one point, I see where you're trying to share the information. So the same thing that happened to you doesn't happen with them. But then I get confused when Gertie says something along the lines of like, I feel like I was testing her. What does it even mean? Who yeah. has cancer? So how long were you guys having that conversation before? So, okay, so when we had that lunch scene, honestly, it was basically like I got ambushed, Teddy. I sat there and we fought for 30 minutes and then she told me she had cancer after we were fighting for 30 minutes. So I didn't have a great response because I was in shock. Okay, so we only saw like two minutes of know, it. So then it's like, why minutes, is she being so insensitive? Right. How so could for she? 30 minutes we fought. We argued over her talking about me in the press. I've never done anything to her. She's had a vendetta against me from last year. And what do you think that stems from? Be I don't care. I don't care. I just know one thing that I wasn't insensitive to her. She, we're not friends. And clearly I see that for what it is. We are not friends. 
and I try to do something that I, you know, I apologize to her. I shouldn't have told her story, but my intention was to literally rally her friends, not even my friends or her friends. She's closer to them than she is to me. And she literally has like bullied me all year over this. On day one of our trip, you asked me for a favor to not put your name in the press and I, and I wanted the same courtesy. I felt like you finally realized that, okay, you know what? Okay, I understand. Lord and behold, this past day, a couple days Can ago. Can I say your name? Look, ho, you didn't have to say her name. Okay, hold on. As you see, Gertie is upset because apparently, I guess Larsa mentioned um, Gertie or alluded to Gertie in an article, but she didn't say her name. But although Larsa didn't say her name, you still alluded to Gertie. So you're still talking about her. So stop playing dumb, ho. Stop, stop, stop. Stop the no. stop I never said your name. I never said your name. You're a bitch. I never said your name. I said your name. Okay, I'm done. Okay, give me what I get today. Okay? Gertie, uh-uh, okay? I do sympathize with all that you're going through. Obviously, cancer is no motherfucking joke. And again, power to you as you have beat it. So yes, okay? But I feel like this pulling your wig off like was too performative. Like you had that shit ready to snatch off. Was it not glued down? Like, and again, I'm not trying to, hold on, let me see something. Yes, honey, I just wanted to try for the effect. But again, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just truly like, were you practicing this move or what? You won't even let me finish a sentence to actually understand. If you're my friend, you're going to say, how did I hurt you? Let me listen to the whole thing. And then we act. But like, I shut up. Ernie, you've been over this. I told you. I know. That's what's told you, 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 It's like beating your head against a brick wall. I know. I know. Stop. Stop. You know what? Right. You're stressing yourself out. Okay, Gertie, don't let these bitches stress you out and make you become undone, okay? I know I joke around on this channel, but I just wanted to say I do appreciate and applaud Gertie for sharing her journey throughout this cancer situation on a national television show. She shaved her head and so on. That's really huge, and that could probably help somebody. So this is the type of stuff I like to see on a reality television show. I mean, not when it's weaponized towards people, like pulling your wig off, as she did. I'm not trying to say she was weaponizing it, but... It just, again, to me, seemed performative. But everything besides that, I loved or love how she is sharing her journey. And I am happy that she has beat cancer, I believe so, right? It's not the I, time. You're going I'm through okay. this. I'm okay. I can multi I'm fine. It's not like I'm no, like, you, know, you think like, you can, can but either. in this situation, no, this is fine. a medical issue. Bitty, bitty, bamba. Bitty, bitty, bamba. Bitty, bitty, bamba. Bitty, Okay, I'm going to stop. But welcome to the kitchen, obviously. Um, it's time for me to share with you my favorite snack. I tried to do so last week. But look, let me share a little story with you. I didn't have my glasses on, so when I was editing the video, it looked like it was very much giving what I thought it was giving. But when I put my eyes back on to see real life, I saw the video was very much crunchy and the lighting was very much sour. So hopefully this lighting is better. Okay, so now it's time for me to share you or share you. Hold on. This shit is starting off sour already. It's time for me to share with you my favorite snack, again, that I tried to share with you last week. So let's get into it. Charles, your snack is ready, okay? Finally, the snack that I wanted to prepare for you guys last week is here, done properly. Last week, it was sour, with sour ice cream, or gelato, or whatever the fuck it was. Whatever was in the fruit roll-up that I prepared last week, uh-uh, okay? Not what I normally have. But today, we have my apple pie mochi in my fruit roll-up, which is my favorite ice cream snack thing in this bitch. So, now, let's get into it. Watch me eat. Bitch. I would like to thank Marty for supporting this channel and helping me find my favorite snacks as I could not find my apple pie mochi anywhere. But with the help of Marty, a female owned business in this bitch, you can find any grocery needs you want in this house. And not to mention most items on their site are much cheaper than going to the actual grocery store. So if you want to shop with them, go ahead and do so and you can use my code to get percentage off. You don't need a subscription, honey, okay? Charles, that snack was taste in this bitch, okay? Let me know if you're at home trying the snack that I just made. You're probably not, but if you have a snack that you like and that you normally make, let me know because I'm curious to 
No. As long as it's not meth, like I said last week, my last recap. Because sometimes when y'all come on this channel, type in some of the asinine things y'all do. It's okay, sometimes I'm a little unhinged too as well, but when I see some of the things that y'all leave, I'm like, mm, meh. <laughs> okay? But it's okay, girl. Just maybe stay away from my channel because I don't do too well with meth heads. But now let's get back into the recap, the tea, everything that you came to watch this video for. So that's enough of that, okay? And I want to go back to talking about Wendy Williams because I'm not sure if I talked about this certain topic. But I see a lot of people coming for her son talking about he seems like an opportunist and all this money he's spending on his apartment and Uber Eats. Y'all are acting like he's not living the life that he came accustomed to. What are y'all expecting him to live? Like how you guys live? Broke? I'm playing. I'm not trying to shade y'all. I'm just saying his mother is a millionaire. That's how he's been living. That's how he was living before his mom got diagnosed with what she got diagnosed with. I don't believe that his mother, or excuse me, <laughs> I don't believe that he is taking advantage of his mother. In fact, he's really trying to fight to see her, save her. She was the most healthiest when she was with and around him. So I'm confused on this narrative about the son. Watch it, girl. Okay. So I want to end this recap here and I want to thank you guys for watching. Hold on. Before I thank you guys for watching and I end it here in this bitch, I wanted to talk about the new casting rumors on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Y'all got rid of Marlo and Sanya. Oh my God. I know some of you guys are at home rejoicing, but I feel like she really saved last season. I mean, what else would we have been watching if it weren't for Marlo? In my opinion, don't eat me up. No shade. Kenya didn't really give anything. Candy really didn't. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay. And y'all want to give Miss Shamila a peach and y'all gave somebody named Ming Lee a peach. Portia has a peach and some other random people have a peach and you're bringing back Drew. Yes for that because she kind of saved last season as well too with her storyline even though it was kind of fake. Um, I don't know how I feel about this cast. But will I be watching? Yes, obviously, okay? And Simon and Portia, are y'all doing whatever's going on between your marriage ratings or what? Is this clickbait? Are y'all really getting a divorce? You ain't really got no money or citizenship, Simon? What's happening? I guess we'll find out, okay? So now we're gonna end this recap here. I wanna thank you guys for watching and listening and I will see y'all next week. Ew. Like JK, but like maybe not. But thank you for watching. But you hating ass bitches always have something to say. Hating ass bitch, but you're still watching my vids. What? 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 <laughs> you're so upset. But that's like okay because have a piece of bread, have a Xanax, relax because I said what I said.